So I think we should talk about packages. Uh, we've been using packages, and now I'm going to show you how to create packages. So pretty much every program we've done so far has been a main program. Uh, they all have package main at the top of them. We put them in folders, and that created a, a binary with the same name as the folder. Uh, but how do you create a package that you can use from your main program, right? We've been using packages, but they were all included with Go. But what if we want to make our own? And that's what we're going to see right here, OK? So the idea is that for a large program, something that's complex and involves a lot of moving pieces and stuff, it's good to break up a program into multiple packages. Okay? And then those multiple packages can be used by other programs. Right? And so this sort of follows the Unix philosophy of programs. Are you guys familiar with the Unix philosophy? Anybody know it? The idea is that a program should be sort of composable. It should do sort of one thing, and, that, and just that one thing. And then other programs should do their one thing, and then you can glue them together, OK? So cat should read a file and display it on the terminal. Cat should not also like turn it into uppercase. Instead, I should make another program, which takes in stuff from standard in, uppercases it, and then sends it back out. And then I would pipe the two together. That's the Unix philosophy of how you build programs, OK? And so similarly, a package should do sort of one thing, and then if I wanted to do something different, I create another package or a main program or something and use it, OK? Um, that's why we have a package for formatting, FMT. That format package doesn't have the CSV reader in it, right? That's a separate package, right? Because CSV reading is not like formatting. They're very different things. They should be in different packages. In the same way, if you're making a program and you find yourself having lots and lots of shared functionality, maybe it's start, time to start breaking it up and pull out some of those common things and put them in. OK, so the way we do that is really easy. And I will show you a really simple example here. So I have in my source folder, I have a bunch of things. But I also have an examples folder, which we've been using. And I made a week one and week two. And I just copied all the stuff we made last week into there. And then I've been making new stuff into the week two folder. Uh, so I'm going to create a, a folder in here called, uh, let's just call it example. So I have. Example slash week two slash example. And then inside of that example folder, well, I'll do it inside of week two. I'll call it example dash main. So I have example and example dash main. Inside of example, I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call it example.go. Now it's going to start with package example. OK? Notice example here matches this. And it's going to have a function. I'm going to call it call me. And what it's going to do is print out, I got called. Okay. It's a really simple function. It starts with a capital letter. Okay. It has to start with a capital letter. Over here, I'm going to create a main.go file inside of example-main. And he's going to use this package I just wrote. So he starts with package main. He has the main function. And now I'm going to use import. So what's the import going to be here? Example. So call me. The, example. It's the full path. So it's examples slash week two slash example. Because that's where it falls underneath source. Examples, week two, example. OK? And then down here, I say example.call. And that calls that function. It calls this function. Cool. Everybody following? So let's see if that actually works. So go up there, cd example dash me. Go install, just like I did before. I don't have to do anything in the example. I'm just including it here, so importing it here. So I say example dash me, because that was the name of the folder. And it says, I got called. So we've created a program that uses another package. And that's a package we invented. OK? Everybody following the basic structure here? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So if you want to create packages, they're just like the programs we've been naming. Just don't start them with package main. Start them with package whatever and use them in your main. OK? That's actually really elegant. Okay. It's very it's, it's very straightforward. It's not hard to do imports at all. Okay, they're just not relative. They're always sort of absolute to the source folder, right? It's, uh, 
Um, it's not like dot dot slash example or anything like that. It's just the name, the full path here. So in general, these are going to look like something like github.com slash your username slash the name of your project or wherever you're storing your source code. Um, okay. So they're pretty, pretty there, straightforward. Is there a restriction for the name of the package? Yeah, like I mean, the folder or something. I mean, I think th there's this distinction between the name here and the name it is here, and there's some subtleties there. Uh, if you just try to avoid like starting with a number, uh, you know, dashes might cause issues, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think how it does dashes is it ends up using the last bit of it or something. So. I, I don't know all the intricacies. You'd have to read the, the spec to see some of them. In general, just just try to avoid naming them things that are going to cause you headaches is the idea. Um, but if you keep to, to simple names, you should be good. Uh, and the convention's lowercase. Uh, you don't have to. You can use an uppercase letter, but that's kind of weird. You don't see that very often. Uh, like I could call this capital E. But generally, don't do that because both Windows and OS X Folders are case sense are not case insensitive, right? So I can have a folder that starts with a capital E, but in Windows and in OS X, by default, it treats that lowercase e the same way, and that causes weird things when people have like lowercase e example and uppercase e example in the same folder, which works fine in Unix and then breaks in strange ways in Windows. So if you just keep all your folders lowercase, you can avoid some of those problems. That's all I'm saying, um, and that's. That's not a Go thing, that's just software development thing in general. Um, okay. Uh, so now we know enough to know how Go Git works. Go Git is really simple. It understands like a few sets of uh, predefined paths. It know what, knows how to get things from GitHub and Bitbucket and a few others. And when you say Go Git, and let's maybe look at an example of that. Down here, I talk about a third party library. So this third party li library, github.com slash tta.com slash chalk, this is the guy's username. Chalk is a library which adds color to your terminal. Uh, we can say go get and the name of the package, okay? So this package name ma matches the same place in the folder we were looking at. So this is the same kind of package name. It knows, the go get command knows how to get code from github. So what it does is when it sees that, it goes and downloads it. And so we can see where it downloaded it. If we go to github.com, and sorry, I have a lot of stuff in here. So and there's Chuck, right? It, went, it downloaded all the, the code from GitHub. Um, and then if you notice, these all have package Chuck at the top of them. And then what it did is it, it's like CD'd into this folder and ran go install, okay? So go get, downloads the source code, and then runs go install on it. And that means that if you get a program that starts with package main off GitHub, when it does that, it puts in your bin folder. Right. So I can install a program in Go by just saying go get, and it goes, downloads the source code, builds it, and puts it in the bin folder. We saw that the very first day with Tetris, right? Um, so here's Cocobun, Tetris. All of these start with package main because that's an executable program. Uh, but in general, we are using ones that are like this, okay? So that's how GoGet works. And we use GoGet to get third-party packages. Everybody following? This is a third-party package. Um, okay, so the way, the neat thing about that is because everybody's following the same rules for this stuff, how do I find the docs for this library? Go docs. Well, okay, no, so the, the first thing is right too, right? How do I find the source code? I just paste it and hit enter, and there's the source code. Because it just so happens the import path is exactly the same as the URL. Like, that's really nice that they match, right? Uh, and so this is exactly the thing I just downloaded with go get. Um, the second part of that is the docs are really easy too. I go to godoc.org and just give it as the URL, the path, right? And there we go. There's the docs for the chalk library, okay? So you can use that import path all over the place and it's really easy to get, to plug them all together. This turns out to be not easy in something like Java, okay? It doesn't have that nice uh, 
it's, it's hard to find docs sometimes in Java. You end up having to search for the package and then go to their website and find out where they put their docs because they have to manually generate them. And this thing is actually works on the fly. If you created a new package on GitHub, uh, you can immediately get the docs here because it has the ability to download them. So this refresh now goes to GitHub, gets the source code, generates the docs. And so now, now it's uh, updated less than a minute ago. So is go.doc.org <coughs> go written in Go? Yeah. So it's all, it's all connected. Everything connects together. Uh, so, and that's the, that was an example of the flexibility of the static analysis makes the tools easier to build. The tools here, you know, if you actually wanted to know where does this documentation come from, well, I put chalk up here, and I go look at chalk.go. Uh, actually, he's done it this way, doc.go. And he just put a big, huge comment at the top of the file. And that's the comments you see on godoc. So there's no other files. It's just comments in the, in the source code. That's how the docs get generated, right? So the comment, uh, the source code for these functions, I mean, like this documentation is just a comment above the function name. So it's all just right in there. Um, okay. So that's GoDoc. Go search is a nice pro, uh, website too. You know how do how do I find something? Um, so remember how we talked about checksums? Yeah. And the neat thing about a checksum big file, I change it, I get a different number. Yeah. Well, what if I wanted to? I have a big file, and I want to get that number. But if I change that file a little bit, I'd like that number to not change so much, okay? Well, that's a completely different problem. That doesn't fit the normal checksum. And it turns out that some people have worked on that, and there's a, there's a bunch of libraries that do this. I think they call them a spam sum, or, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> and, and you could search for that here, right? So, so maybe uh, it's, uh, I forget the name of the library now, but, uh, there it is. Uh, and this is like a regular search. And the reason it's called spam sum, it's a fuzzy checksum, is because they used it for uh, when they were writing, the algorithm they used was for when they were writing things to filter emails to see whether they're spam or not. And you know, if I change a few words inside the email, I'd like, to, I'd like it still to match. And that's the idea, a fuzzy checksum. Um, and so you could use this package, right? And so this is another website you can use the go search if you're looking for something and you don't know, like, I don't know this import path, I can just search for, uh, oh, it opened a new tab. I can just search. Every fall. This is really easy to use. So sometimes this is a good place to find packages uh, to do things. So, like color, terminal, maybe it'll turn up my chalk package. There's a lot of these, it turns out. But anyway. So go not Go dash search. And they're all connected together. Like here's the go doc. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are two websites you should try to use often when you're trying to figure stuff out. Okay, and then the fi final thing I'll talk about with packages. Uh, some people are not satisfied with that go get capability. Can anybody think of a downside of using go get? You have to store all the code on your computer, both upside and downside. Any other? What downside? if a package needs another package? <laughs> so if a package needs another package, it's recursive. So it'll go get all the packages needed by that package and so on. That's why sometimes go get takes a while, because it's actually downloading hundreds of packages. So uh, that's kind of like gold though or something, right? Yeah, so one of the downsides is there's no version information stored in that import path. And if somebody goes and changes that package, it may break your program. Mm -hmm. And so some people find that uh, they don't like that. And so there are these other tools, GoDep, GB, there's a whole bunch of other ones. And what these do is they add a layer of dependency management on top of GoGet. Um, it's like a build tool, like you're talking about golf. <coughs> uh, so I'll, I'll show you. Whoops, that's not what I meant to say. Uh, GB, so it's a project-based build tool. You can read more on how to do it. Uh, this is only like really needed if you if you're planning on uh, like working with a team and stuff. You might want to think about using one of these guys. 
uh, just because it makes your builds reproducible in a way that the other one isn't. In other words, I can include a specific version of a library and not the most recent, which is kind of what GoGit does. Um, so, something to keep in mind. Oh, I just, I, I didn't mention it, but uh, typically on Google, if you're searching for something, like if I go to Google, you want to search for Golang, all one word, and then the thing. Okay. And it'll work. Go is not a very good search. It's a very common word. <laughs> and so it doesn't, it doesn't search well sometimes. And so Golang ends up being the... Okay. That's annoying, but it is what it is. All right, so these should be pretty straightforward, these problems. Create a new package with a function named hello. I basically did this, but these are different names, so do that one. And then here's create a new package, week two, day one, converters. Remember those conversion functions we, want? we made? Miles to kilometers, Fahrenheit to Celsius? Well, that's a great example of something that could be a package, right? How do I convert miles to kilometers? I could make a function called miles to km inside of a package and then just use that. And that's what the second problem is doing is say rewrite our conversion program and use that package instead. And then here's the third one, use a third party library to add color to your program. Color here meaning literally color, like print things out as blue. I, I didn't mean like commentary or something. <laughs> Actual color. Uh, okay, everybody understand? Cool, thank you. Cool.